Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through a highlight of one of the live streams of how to find the limits of various data types in C++. So there is a way to check this out here. Now this is going to look a little convoluted. Don't get caught up on the syntax here. Uh, let's just be aware that this exists and we can use it. Because if you wanted to troubleshoot some things, this is a good way to uh, figure things out, at least for your whatever system you're using. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and use C out. That's going to print something out to my console. I'm gonna use something called uh, numeric limits. Let's hope it uh, exists here. So let's just do int first. Then I'm gonna look for min and let's try printing that out. So this is going to be minimum number for an int. Let's see if we can get something out of this. So nothing too special here. It's just we're printing something out, then we're putting our own few characters here all together. Um, this is known as a string. And then we're also including um, this, this function min and allowing it to return the minimum of a templated int. And then we put a new line character at the end. Let's go ahead and run this. Make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. I'll just run it like this. Let me make sure I got this right. Um, C out numeric underscore limits integer min and line. I don't think I had to include anything. I would have thought this was you know, it might be in a different header class. Let's see if it's limits. Maybe that's what I have wrong. Rerun this. All right, that's it. So there was uh, a different header it actually belonged in. So it does, it is part of the uh, standard library. It just, I didn't include the proper header from the standard library. Uh, as soon as I included uh, limits, it did let me compile. So. Let's go and check this out here. I'm gonna recompile, hit main, and now I see this number. So what does that number represent? Well, we actually figured out this number before. This is the minimum value that an integer can represent or hold or get assigned with. So now you know the minimum number. So we'll just say again here, this is for int min value. All right, so now we know the int minimum value. I'll put a space here and why not a colon and another space. And we can now reuse this to figure out all of our other minimums. Let's talk about that. Actually, before we do that, why not figure out what the maximum is? Is this going to match that number that we calculated earlier? Well, we'll be able to tell here in just a moment. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit that like button for me. It really does help me out. So the number we calculated as our theoretical maximum is actually this number here. So I'm going to write this out and let's go ahead and rerun this. So all I did here was change min to max and now I should be able to rerun and recompile first. And look at that. Does this number match this number? Sure looks like it. We should have changed this to max. This is a great way to check the limits of any given data type. So if you don't know what the limit is, you know, you can't you can't work out the math. You can't use the calculator. You can't work out the math, or it just doesn't make sense to do it that way. There is a built-in way to do it if you include limits and you use this right here. I'm not going to go into too much depth with what all this means, but um, just understand all you really need to change is you specify the data type here between these uh, symbols here, the less than and greater than symbol and then you define whether you want the max or the minimum. We'll continue on here. Let me just uh, get a little background noise going. Um, so we talked about the character size as well, but before we get there, let's, let's check out floats. 
and we'll check out what the difference between a float and a double is as far as the minimum and maximum sizes. So I'm going to go ahead and control, well, copy that. So this is for, let's do a float. So now we are looking to see what the uh, minimum value of a float is and what the maximum value of a float is. So again, important to know in case you're getting up somewhere in a really large number and you don't know whether you can represent it with a float, this is a good way to check. Let's go ahead and compile and run. And now we can see that the float minimum value is this very large number. So this is one point, let's just say one seven times 10 to the negative 38th power. That is a huge number. <laughs> so you can represent a lot of numbers here. Also notice that there are decimals here. So a float is a decimal, a decimal number. So uh, what kind of uh, maximum can it support? Well, it says 3.4 times 10 to the 38th power, amazing. Now we understand what a float can store at its minimum and at its maximum, and we'll continue on to a double. Do you think if we do a double, is it gonna represent two times this amount or, or, or not? Let's check. I, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say it's gonna support well over two times the amount, but let's check. So all I, again I did was just change this double here inside the less than and greater than symbol for min and max. That's all I need to do. Recompile, and here we go. Now notice we have 2.2 times 10 to the negative 308th power. That's amazing. That's a very, very large number. If you're dealing with uh, numbers larger than this, you're getting close to infinity. <laughs> uh, we talked about a float, a double, an integer. Let's finally talk about the character. So the character is a little special here because, let's see, I bet you we get something a little goofy when we do a character and we'll fix that goofiness. So let's do char. We'll do min and max for that. And just to keep things clean, I'm gonna go ahead and put char in front. I'm gonna recompile, run this, and look at that. Isn't that interesting? So it says char min value, question mark. <laughs> char max value, nothing. Well, that's because it's actually returning some sort of non-printable character from here. We can fix this. Um, we can actually do a little bit of a cast here. And if I do int, and then I surround uh, my numeric limits inside of it, I think we'll get the right numbers then. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. So I mentioned before, um, really the numbers were, let's see. Well, let's just come up with it one more time and see if we're right. So my guess here is going to be two to the eighth power because we know a character takes up one byte. So that's 256, but I have to um, divide that by two. So I got 128. All right, so my guess here for the min is going to be negative 127 uh, or actually 128, let me get the calculator back up. Yes, and then negative or positive 127 here. So let me try rerunning this. And do these match up to what I guess? They sure do. So the reason being is the character is currently a signed value, meaning it contains both negatives and positives. Um, and all these numbers represent is some type of a character. Don't get caught up on that this is showing a number right now. Just be aware that these numbers just represent characters. That's it. Uh, and we can figure out those characters through uh, just Google something and it's called the ASCII 
uh, just look up like ASCII C++ table, something like that. Any ASCII uh, table will work, but uh, it's just something to keep in mind. So um, I believe you can also do this with the numeric limits um, instead of, let's guess a different number here. I'm going to go 0 to 255 here, and I'm going to do an unsigned, meaning there's no negative numbers allowed. We can also use this, and I'll go ahead and uh, talk about this in a moment because we haven't really seen that yet. So look at that. What was my guess? 0 and 255. So the minimum value is 0 here for an unsigned character. And the maximum value is 255. And if you were to add these two numbers together, right? If this wasn't a negative, you'd get 255. So the representation goes from negative 128 to 127. Instead, when you use an unsigned, it goes from only positive numbers, 0 to 255 here for a character. So this uh, works across the board. Um, so for an integer, we could do it as well. And if you want to see even more, make sure to check out the live version of this stream. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.